Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement 2. On today's video, it's gonna be, I think what I call a test and try. So we have a Macintosh Plus here on the bench, and I have a pile of motherboards. It's not a huge pile, it's uh, actually three motherboards to try inside of this machine. Essentially what I'm trying to do here is just figure out which of these are working, which are not, and if this thing works as well. So any of these could become a repair. And I normally we might do this on my own without showing it on video, but that's what the second channel is for, right? Just maybe people will enjoy it. So first, let's take a look at this Mac. I'll move the camera into a better position. So we have a Macintosh Plus. Um, I don't see any burn-in. It was covered in kind of like a mold, a little bit of a, I don't know, spots, like it was stored in a damp environment, but I gave it a wipe down before I started recording. And it looks pretty good, actually. I don't really see any blemishes on the front. I'd say it's probably slightly yellowed, but otherwise in pretty good shape. Missing its um, reset interrupt switch on the side. And on the back, well, it's a one megabyte model. It's missing the door. I do see some corrosion there. Let's zoom in a little bit there. Do you see that corrosion in there? Let's see if I can zoom in even more. <laughs> I'm not used to my new camera yet. So yeah, a little bit of corrosion there, but not a big deal. Luckily, this kind of corrosion depth usually does not affect what is inside the machine, what is down below. And that is a really good thing. So as I said, it's a one megabyte model, which makes sense. I think pretty much all of the beige, or this is the earlier kind of beige ones, not the platinum color. I think they were all one megabyte models. You'll notice it does not have a motherboard installed in it, nor are the screws installed in it. So uh, yeah, there's no motherboard in here to test. Obviously we have these ones to try out in here. And on this side, things look good. Now there is something interesting though, and it's right here. Let me get closer with the camera. I'm hoping the camera is focusing properly on that, but what is normally the lock hole where you would uh, put a security lock, there appears to be some kind of multi-pin connector there. So this must've had uh, an add-on board originally that actually connected to an external monitor. And I think I actually have the matching motherboard that goes with this machine. Uh, the stuff here that I have for testing, it wasn't like all together all at once, but one of these motherboards has an add-on board and it's this one right here. It's uh, got some kind of a board attached to the CPU. So that's probably, probably what that is. I don't have the monitor that goes with that nor the, the cable. That's a very interesting thin connector, so something very proprietary. But it might be kind of fun if we can figure out what kind of card this is. Maybe there's some software available for it and we can hook it up to something like the RGB to HDMI and see the Mac Plus driving an external monitor. I don't have much confidence that it's gonna work, but you know, we can, we can think about that. Speaking of the motherboards, let's take a look at the three motherboards that I do have. So this is a Mac Plus motherboard. Looks like it probably only has a megabyte of RAM on it though. So that's a bit weird if they were actually using it with, um, well, it says right here what this is. Radius full page display from 1986. Pretty sweet. So the CPU on this board will have been socketed and I'm assuming, uh, yep, you can kind of look down there. There's a socket that is sandwiched between this board and it goes into the motherboard. So basically all of these ICs here take off um, the, the CPU data bus and then allow or facilitate the use of an external monitor. Interesting is I don't see a whole lot of, uh, well, a whole lot of anything on here, which is interesting because I just assumed there would have been more going on for an external display. These are some kind of RAM chips. They're NEC 41264. I'm not 100% sure what those are, part number, but this could be like the frame buffer or something like that. We have a couple lattice gals. This is most certainly, these are gals as well, most certainly, a couple ROM chips. So my assumption is this is absolutely the frame buffer for this video board and it is the gal chips that just read out the frame buffer and display it out this video connector here, which would go to that connector on the back. And that these ROMs will tie in somehow to this main system and facilitate that additional monitor support. I'm sure drivers are necessary, but uh, some type of ROM functionality is needed. Remember that the 68000 has a 16 megabyte address space and this machine only supports up to a maximum of four megabytes of RAM, plus there's some ROMs and stuff like that on there. So I think there are some gaps in the original Macintosh Plus memory map of that 16 megabytes. 
and that's obviously where this board comes into play. Now, the funny thing is you might be thinking like, where are the video chips or whatever that drives the video? Well, gals can do a lot of that. And with these old systems, even the built-in video, the CPU is doing all of the heavy lifting and pushing pixels in and out of the screen. There are no coprocessors on these early Macintosh to speed up any of that activity. It's not like the Amiga or anything like that. So yeah, it is this eight megahertz 68,000 that really is doing all the heavy lifting. So the performance of the onboard video here will be pretty much the same as uh, the rest of the system. Now I do notice this is a 12 megahertz 68,000 and the crystal here is 55 megahertz. So there's a crystal there. Who knows if this thing actually runs faster than the stock eight megahertz. Maybe that's just a, the CPU is just rated for 12. It's not really there. Uh, this crystal could totally be used for the video circuitry just for it to display this stuff out of this connector. When it comes to the rest of this board, it's all pretty much run of the mill. Whoever did the socketing of the CPU did a good job. I don't see any kind of damage and they cleaned up pretty much all the flux. So that's excellent. Board is in really nice shape otherwise. And yeah, not much else to report. There are day codes on these ROMs here, 2.3 and 1986. And that appears to match the day codes that are on these other ICs as well. That says 21st week of 1986 and it is soldered down. And that kind of matches actually what we see on the Mac motherboard too, 8622, 8622. These are Apple chips. Uh, yeah, 8628. So looks like uh, I must have bought this machine and probably got this thing around the same time and had it installed by a professional dealer, hence the good quality work that's been done to this thing. All right, the next motherboard for testing is, well, pretty run of the mill. I wrote untested Mac Plus on here. That's my writing. Uh, this memory here does appear to be my memory, while well, meaning like it has check marks on it, which means I must have stuck it on here, probably in preparation for testing, but I don't remember honestly when I did that. Probably been a long time ago. This motherboard is super clean. These are one megabyte. Um, oh, you know what? Look, I have a tick mark right there. So I wonder if I did test this. All right, well, the it's good actually if I did because we can put this into this chassis here and see if it's working, see if this chassis works with this particular motherboard. But yeah, that that most likely is, is my tick mark there. But the motherboard looks really good and the back of course looks really, really good as well. And it's quite possible that I gave this motherboard a clean a wash, a clean, a wash, you know, all of that under the soap and water because that's kind of what I do. I like to do that and uh, just makes things nicer looking and easier to work on. And I don't know, it exposes any kind of issues that you might not see under the grime. And uh, yeah, that's why I do it. Anyways, okay, next motherboard. All right, well, the next motherboard is not a Mac Plus motherboard at all, but it's actually looks like a Mac 512 motherboard. What's it say? Yeah, 512 has a little mark there. Can either be a 128 or a 512 and it's a 512. So it's kind of old, 85, 1985, 48th week. So the end of 1985. Interesting is it's not that far off from the dates on those Mac Plus motherboards, but indeed eight megahertz processor and the memory here. Yep, 256, uh, 200 nanoseconds. So we have 512K of RAM there. And this is what a Mac 512 motherboard looks like. Very similar, in fact, to the Mac Plus. And the only real difference, let me grab one of the Mac Plus motherboards here. Uh, the main difference, of course, are the SIM sockets. So allowing up to four megabytes of memory, not a whole lot of other differences. Things are pretty similar on this. The Macintosh Plus added SCSI, which is this IC right here, and there's the SCSI connector. So that is missing on this thing. But I think they just sort of tied that into the, the data bus or whatever. And I'm sure there's a little bit of uh, glue logic of some kind, most likely up here in these PAL chips. So these are PALs. We have four, five, so we have six on the Mac Plus here. And on the 512, we only have five. So there's an additional one that they added, maybe to support the, uh, the SCSI, I don't know. But ROMs are there and the floppy drive controller. And these are for the serial ports slash Apple talk Well, this one is and uh, 6522. I can't remember what does what on the Mac, but it is all pretty similar to this one. It's got the same chips in the same position. Now you can plug a 512 motherboard like this into a Mac plus without any issue. 
The biggest problem, of course, is the ports here do not line up. So I can't install this motherboard into the case. That doesn't work. You'd need a new back cover. But that was actually a common upgrade is that people would upgrade their older Macs to Mac Pluses and you just have to switch the back cover and everything internally was actually still compatible and still the same. The monitor and the power supply and all that, all that good stuff. So we can definitely test this out. I don't know where this came from. It's dirty, so I haven't cleaned it. As I just mentioned, I like to do. So um, I'll probably do that if this board is working, if it's gonna require repair especially because I prefer to work on it when it's nice and clean. Alrighty, so that's the overview. Let's, uh, let's get to testing. I think first thing we need to do is move these motherboards out of the way and let's open the computer case, see what's inside because we have to worry about things like Arifa caps on some of these Macs. I remember once <laughs> I had a Mac Plus sitting there on the bench, plugged in, but turned off and the Arifa inside let the magic smoke out. All right, so there's no screws right here, by the way. So for opening it, you do need to check to make sure there's none in the top and there doesn't appear to be any. So this thing should come apart. Sometimes it helps to put it on your lap, like I just did. And then you can uh, grip the top cover and pull it up a little bit better. I think there's a tool called a Mac Cracker, which like allows you to put a little tool up in the seam here and spread it apart more easily. I don't have such a thing. <laughs> Considering how many of these Macs I've worked on, I probably should get one, but I don't think I've ever seen one for sale or I don't know where to get them. All right, let's move the camera because take a look at that. That is that funky cable that plugs into the monitor. Now I can definitely tell here that this uh, copper wire here is the video signal. The ground is the shield that will be video. And then the rest of these are gonna be sync, two of them, I guess, probably a ground. And I don't know, some kind of signaling maybe, something like that. As far as this connector back here, I wonder if I can take this out because it really doesn't need to be in there anymore because I don't have the cable anyways and it'd be better to keep that with the motherboard. All right, that is out. And that was very, very difficult. There's the cable and it was a massive pain. Basically this is designed to, well, you uh, feed this through the back of the case so you would stick the connector in like that and this goes all the way in and this is basically designed to fit perfectly into that security lock thing and uh yeah it's an interesting little piece of engineering but it's very difficult to get out because of course this uh connector on the back of the case is a one-way thing it's designed for that security thing to go in and it's very difficult to take out all right well let's take a look at the mac so right off the bat we have a couple refas right there so that means uh it's not particularly safe to use this thing with those in there because uh, like I said, they are connected directly to the, the mains input right here. So even when the power switch is off, those can let the magic smoke out and it's pretty annoying and kind of disturbing when that happens. So I'm gonna take both of those out before I even plug this thing in. Let's just quickly look at the rest of this though. And I'm gonna say that Everything looks okay. I'm not noticing anything out of the ordinary. None of the caps are bulging or look particularly bad. Everything on first appearance, it looks okay. As for the CRT here, there is definitely a lot of soot on this. Now I haven't turned this thing on in a million years. I mean, I don't even know the last time it's been on. It's been many, many months. It's been sitting around my house. So in other words, uh, there's no danger of, you know, touching this stuff because it's not energized. And I haven't plugged it in. But do not work on side of these things unless you know how to be safe because yeah, danger high voltages. Look, there's even a little sticker right here. Danger right there. But looking at this thing, yeah, it's gonna be high hour just by the amount of soot on here. And one thing that is annoying about these Macs, and I'm gonna to try to get this in focus, is on the flyback there, this, this stuff right here, this is like a glue they put on the flyback. And unfortunately, it absorbs water. And um, this little clamp thing that goes through here starts to rust out because of this. So sometimes I just try to like get this stuff off of there. Unfortunately, it's very, very tough, but yeah, it, it absorbs water. Now I'm wondering, and maybe some material experts can chime in on this. This has absorbed water already. That's why it's discolored. It would have been like a whitish color, I think originally. What if we paint this with some kind of a lacquer to keep the moisture from getting to it? Would that slow the process or is it too late because it has already absorbed the water 
and that this bar is in danger now of rusting right here. I see a little bit of corrosion on it, but it doesn't look too bad. But yeah, sometimes I try to chip away at this, at least where that, that bar is there, just to keep it from rusting away. Okay, so let's see here. For the reefas, um, well, this has already been peeled back to some extent. There's these like, well, sometimes there's little black things that hold it on, but this has this like double-sided foam, which is super annoying because if we take this off, it's going to basically never go back on again. So sometimes I like to like just leave one corner on and just lift this up, see how I peel these off. Uh, the reefas are right around here. So I'm just gonna put this on its side and I'm gonna get those reefas out. Alrighty, the caps are out. This is the X cap, 0.1 microfarad. It got a little shredded and there were actually two of these Y caps. Uh, these were 4,700 picofarads. So I took both of those out. Now, when these go bad, I don't know if they go bad, but if they do, that's bad because it could actually connect the mains to the earth ground, which of course on these Max is this chassis right here. And that could trip your breaker, but it could also give you a shock if you don't have a properly grounded outlet. Anyhow, those have been replaced. I put in proper Viche Y cap safety caps there um, to replace these two. And this one I put in a, a 0 0.1 uh, microfarad there. So while this thing is out like this, um, I've made videos before about these Mac Pluses. Really, it, you should just go ahead and um, reflow the solder on the connectors. This is the cable here. Um, it's this one down here that goes to the motherboard. It's right there. Plus the, the connection here that goes to the CRT you should do and this uh, deflection yoke connector, which is up here and might as well do the flyback as well. Any of those or all of those seem to go bad on these a lot and you get picture that cuts out and stuff. I've made a video previously on that on the main channel. I'll link to it down below. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reflow those now while I have the cover off. And then I need to chop these legs off because I see they're still sitting there before I plug it in, that would be very bad. And then I'm gonna put some hot glue to like reconnect this uh, plastic here. All right, the joints have been reflowed and obviously I had to take this off entirely because they stick uh, the, the foam pad right on top of the connector that goes to the deflection yoke. It's these pins right here, very annoying. So before I forget, I'm gonna crop these legs off, these new caps that I put in the board. Just get those off of here. So <laughs> that would be very bad. You do not want to forget to do this because uh, that's the mains right there. And that would create a bad situation, very bad. All right, I'm gonna grab the motherboard here. This is the one that has the tick mark, which I think is the working one. And we're gonna, we're gonna use this for testing here. So pop this onto here like so, and you just sort of stand this up. And remember, don't do this unless you know what you're doing because danger high voltage here and operating the system like this uh, could lead to problems. And by problems, I mean you could be hurt very badly and you do not want that. So let's plug this in. Okay, didn't make any unhappy sounds, even with those new caps in there, which are currently connected. The computer is off right now. And here we go, let's hit the power. Okay, that sounds good. Oh, look at that. We have an image. Try to make this so you can actually see it too. All right, there it is. So uh, you can see we have the Macintosh image and um, yeah, it looks good actually. So considering this screen looked worn out or whatever, the, or a lot of hours on the high voltage, we do have the flashing question mark. So that's a good sign. All right, we have the multimeter here. Let's uh, take a look at these signals. 3.2, that's probably a video signal. 3.0, I don't know, it could be a sync signal. Let's go over here. 4.6, if that's uh, if that's the main voltage rail, that is pretty low. 12.0 is good. That's nothing, ground most likely. Negative 12.4, that's okay. Nothing there, must be another ground. Ah, 5.0, that looks good. Let us try to measure the voltage off one of these TTL ICs right here. Yeah, 5.03 volts. That is looking good. Let me hit the power switch and turn this off. All right, on the floppy emu, I have system six, hopefully selected, I think. <laughs> Let's see what happens. System tools, it says. Oh yeah, there we go. It is booting, excellent. 
I plugged in a mouse and we have what looks like a working system or not. That would be a crash right there. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Is this system actually not working? Rude is what that is. Okay, I'm going to try to boot Dark Castle because I figure a game is going to be a better test than a particular system that may not work. I'm pretty sure that the floppy drive on this computer is not going to be working. But this is a good test. We have sound that works. Excellent. And here's the demo running and it looks good. No glitches, no issues. Picture looks good, sound is working. This game is quite hard and I've never really been able to finish it. I know other people have done a playthrough, but me, no. Uh, I've always kind of got stuck with this, stuck on it that is. All right, so I'm gonna say that this is good to go. Uh, let's eject this out of the machine and we'll turn the computer off. So I'm gonna say that this motherboard does work. I, of course, I'm not I haven't tested everything because uh, there's obviously the SCSI interface we haven't tried. There's the serial ports, Apple Talk, the keyboard interface. Uh, I think everything else is pretty much good on this because we were playing a game successfully on it. So my little uh, silver tick mark is good. And uh, yeah, these are one meg SIMs and I'm pretty sure this thing is four megs because it took that long for the diagnostic. So excellent, one working motherboard. Now, while we have that one unplugged, what we're gonna do is unplug the mains here out of the back, and then I'm gonna hot glue this plastic cover back onto the side, because I can smell the glue gun is definitely already here. <laughs> so all we have to do is just uh, glob some hot glue onto here, and then we just put it quickly in place, and that should do the trick. Just make sure it is in the right spot. There we go. You wanna make sure it's aligned so you can get to these adjustment holes. And, oh, that's hot, hot, that's hot, hot glue. The hot glue is glue. The hot, no, the hot glue is hot. Who knew the hot glue was so hot? <laughs> now I definitely recommend putting this cover back on. And that's because all those main voltages are there. And obviously if you have the cover off and you put your hand here like that, I mean, it's still potentially dangerous, but uh, the main stuff is all underneath here and there's other high voltages and stuff. So generally that's gonna keep you from accidentally putting your hand potentially um, onto some high voltages, which would not be good for you. All righty, let's grab the next motherboard here, this uh, Mac 512 motherboard. Uh, let's see how this connects up. Now I'm not sure I have any 400K disc images on my floppy EMU to boot this thing. So we may need to hook up an external disc drive. Cause like I said, I'm pretty sure this internal disc drive isn't gonna be working properly, especially the eject gear, It'll probably be dead. But yeah, I don't know about any 400K disc images because unless this thing has the enhanced ROMs, which I didn't actually look to see if it does, then it cannot boot double-sided disks. It will boot only single-sided disks. All right, so there it is. Let's turn this on. We should hear the bong. We do, that's a good sign. The floppy emu is powering up. Let's see, do we get an image? There it is. Wow, look how quickly it got to this screen because it didn't have to check four megs of RAM and only had to check 512K. So I go to Macintosh and we go to system disks. Oh yeah, system disk uh, 1.1 and 2.0 and 3.2 are on here. Here we go. Hey, look at that, it's booting. Sweet. So we'll plug the mouse in. Oh, look how old it looks. Uh-oh, it was not happy with that disk. It ejected it, which is why it is no longer doing anything there. I'm not sure the minimum system version for Mac 512. Obviously it has to be one that's 400K. So let's try an older one. How about system disk two? I'm gonna reset the computer with pushing the reset button on the side here. There we go. Okay, system disk 2.0 is in there. 
Should boot, maybe, maybe. Welcome to Macintosh, that's a good sign, excellent. I tell you, these Macs are reliable. They are freaking reliable. When it comes to 8-bit or 16-bit machines, and you know, Motorola 68000 is a 32-bit processor. Look at this thing, just works. It's so old and yet fully functional. So 512K of RAM says it right there. Maybe I should zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. There we go, 512K. Apple Computer 1985, System 4.1. I mean, it works just like you would expect. It's a, an early version of the system. Open the calculator. Boop, boop, boop. Let's go check out the volume control in the control panel here. Let's hear some beeps, beeps and boops. You can make this quieter, make it louder. Why don't I put the Dark Castle disc in there? It's 800K and let's see if this can even load that at all. Nope, that just crashed. I think that's happening either because there's not enough RAM or it's a double-sided disc and this thing doesn't support the double-sided drives. I think you can swap out the ROMs. It's like when you have a 512KE with the E for enhanced, I think that allows it to have double-sided disc drive. Whether this thing has that or not, I don't know. And I don't actually don't know if you could just need new ROMs and it just, the, the disc controller chip, which is not socketed back there. If that's the same, the IWM, it probably is. But let's uh, reboot this thing here. Do I have any games that are only 400K? Oh, here's one, Flight Simulator. Let's try this one. See if this works. I'm assuming if it's 400K, it's kind of designed to work on the 512 and obviously it says, welcome to Macintosh. Let's see if it can load anything at all. I mean, it's loading the system, that's, that's nice. All right, so there it is, Flight Simulator. <laughs> it's complaining that Flight Simulator must be in the internal drive as the startup disk. Click the mouse button to reset the Macintosh. That is extremely rude. That is quite rude. I don't know if I can just plug the floppy emu into the internal connector. I'm afraid to do that because I don't want to damage anything. So I'm not going to do that. But uh, well, anyways, there we go. It did load up. Who actually makes this? Is this a Microsoft Flight Simulator? Let's see if we get info on it. Does it have the name? Microsoft Flight Simulator version 1.02. All right, there is another game that's 400K. It says Fokker Triplane. So Fokker is a type of plane or, you know, airplane. And um, maybe this one can run from the external drive. All right, Triplane Simulator. Let's give it a try. <laughs> give the Triplane Simulator a try. <laughs> Pun intended. Start it up. Let's look at the date on this program. 1985. Yo, it says instead of okay. Not sure. Maybe you need the keyboard to actually do anything. And it looks like I can't even escape the mouse. I'm stuck in the little uh, yoke area down here. Either way, it's working. So I'm going to say that this motherboard is good to go. And I need to give it a bath. But I will do that after the fact. And let's uh, turn this off. And I'm going to mark this as good with the tick mark. And then we'll go on to the final board, which is the one that has that video card on it. Incidentally, the ROMs, if people can tell me if these are enhanced or not, the part number on the high ROM is 342-0220-B, and then the low ROM is 342-0221-B. I'm wondering if the B is the enhanced version. I don't know. And then the integrated WAS machine is 344-0041B, as in Baker. All right, last but not least, here is the final board. So this Mac Plus board, like I've said, has this daughter board on it with the radius uh, ROMs and all this stuff on here. So let's get this connected up. And I should try to figure out how to get the hard drive booting on this because I don't think we're gonna be able to do much with this radius card, you know, just to even see it kind of working without the hard drive connected. But either way, let's first just see if this board even boots up at all by using the floppy emu and a mouse. And we'll hit the power switch. Okay, that's a great sign that it does boot. I'm gonna try a different system disk on here than the one I used last time that crashed on the other Mac Plus motherboard. So it's system 608. So the system is booted. Let's see if it crashes. Okay, one meg of RAM exactly like I thought. Wow, how weird to have an external large monitor with only one meg of RAM. One thing I'm noticing is 
I hope this comes across in the camera, but check out the font on the menus. It's bigger than it is. It's a lot bigger than it is on the normal Mac. So this must be those ROMs. They must be somehow patching part of the operating system somehow. Pretty sure the file menu doesn't come all the way down to here on the stock system. So those radius ROMs on the CPU or that little video board, they must be doing something. Probably because that large full page display that you're supposed to use with this, it benefits from these larger menus. just easier to see. I don't know. The rest of the fonts look the same though. So if we load up README here, Oh, yeah, it said teach text at the top there and there was a bunch of space underneath it because that was using the normal sized font versus the, the larger menu there. So yeah, everything looks good here. It's nice the system's not crashing too. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, huge menus, very weird, very weird to see. And in case you might be thinking that that is something to do with that system disk, I'm gonna pick a different one. I'm gonna pick uh, disk tools here off this other one. This is the one that crashed on the other machine. Let's see if it crashes on this machine, because if it does, then that's a good sign. If it doesn't, then there might be actually a fault on that other motherboard, even though we are running Dark Castle without any issue. Yep, there it is, large menu bar as well. <laughs> and we went to About Finder and it crashed on the other machine and it's working on this one. That is interesting. I'm gonna have to go back to that other, for that first Mac Plus motherboard and we're gonna have to test, test again booting and see if it's crashing because that obviously indicates that there is some kind of a fault on that other board. But yeah, look at that big font on the top. It just looks so weird. Can I run something like disk first aid? Watch how large uh, the menu bar is gonna look. Yeah, see that disk first aid at the top and there's a bunch of space. That's the normal font size. <laughs> how funny, oh, even this, that just looks so weird. Hmm. I started looking around for information on this card, like drivers and software and stuff, and I, it exists out there, but it's not easy to find. There's a lot of broken links and stuff. So I think I'm gonna make that a main channel video where we try to get this card working, maybe with a modern monitor, like an LCD screen or something like uh, the RGB to HDMI even. That would be cool. So yeah, that's gonna be a main channel video. And what I need to do now is let's go back to that first Mac Plus motherboard that was crashing and just identify for sure if it's actually working or there's a system disk problem or what's going on exactly. All right, we're booting up as normal. I'm using that second disk image, the one that has uh, teach text on it, I think. Not that first system tools one that I tried the first time on here. Let's see what happens. All right, so the system booted up without issue. And yeah, by the way, look at the file menu only comes to there, not down to the bottom of the screen. First, let's try teach text here. And there's also Mac write on this disk. So we'll try these. Okay, that worked. And we can try Mac write. Neither of these programs use the four megabytes of RAM. They only need one meg. So if there's a RAM problem on this, should have detected the RAM problem, to be honest, while the system was powering on. Yeah, there it is. This is uh, completely working. All right, well, anyways, let's go to the about and see if it crashes. Well, it didn't crash that time. And it does confirm that we have four megs of RAM zoom in a little bit there so why was the other one crashing let's restart and we'll switch to the other disk system tools that is all right there we go system tools has virtually been inserted okay so this is not the same thing we were running before because the last disk i had on the other one i forgot which one it was but it had like a hard drive setup and a disk tools on it uh is this one the one that crashes though well, it didn't crash anyways, so yeah, okay. I don't know, that must've been a fluke. I wonder if it crashed because I connected the mouse while the system was powered on. I don't know, you, generally that's fine to do on these Macintoshes, but who knows, right? Alrighty, there we have it. That's gonna be it for this video. So this chassis works perfectly. I just had to swap out uh, this one Rifa, well, three Rifas, an X cap and two Y caps. So that is good to go. I refloated all the solder joints. I hot glued that plastic cover back on. Then we tested out this Mac Plus motherboard and it worked without issue, except for that one weird crash, but it never crashed again and worked fine. So I had already written a tech tick mark there to say it's good. Then we tested out this motherboard, which is a Mac 512 motherboard, unknown if it's E or not. If you do recognize the ROM part numbers, comment down below, please. But uh, this just works perfectly as well. We loaded up a game on here and it appears to work. So that's good to know. So we have a working 512 motherboard 
And then this Mac Plus motherboard here with this Radius full page display. I extricated this cable and this thing seems to work properly as well. By the way, when I was searching online for the software, I noticed uh, it talking about version 4.4 .4 of the ROMs and this is 2.3. So if anyone knows where to get the 4.4 .4 ROMs, let me know. I think you need those to run System 7, although System 7 kind of sucks on the Mac Plus. It's very slow. But um, I will need to try to find software for these. So if you happen to know where software drivers are for this, please let me know. A manual would be great as well. And then also, I guess I should dump these ROMs and put those on archive.org in case someone ever has one of these that doesn't work. Well, you need some ROMs that, that do work. There they are. There are some ROMs on here. This thing needs an upgrade to four megs. Uh, it's easy enough. I have lots of that RAM. You have to cut a jumper over here or solder a jumper. I can't remember. Or maybe you don't have to do anything, to be honest, if you're just swapping from 256 to one meg. I think if you're doing like 2.5 megs, you got to do something with a the jumper there. I don't quite remember. But either way, it's all documented online. But that works as well. So we have three good working motherboards here. And I have a working chassis, which is excellent. So I think what I need to do with this chassis is probably pair it up to one of these motherboards, not the 512 motherboard, that doesn't really belong in here, but one of these, uh, the, probably the, the bone stock Mac Plus motherboard and then button it up so that I can have uh, you know, a working Mac Plus. Excellent. So if you enjoyed this video, thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thanks to my patrons, their names are swimming up side of the screen, this side today. They make all of this possible. They are totally awesome. My patrons are amazing. I love them all. So thank you very much to all of them. If you want to become a supporter, there's a link in the description below. And you can do so. You get behind the scenes on some of the higher tiers and early access to videos on all the tiers and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a good stuff. It's, it's a good thing, that is. Definitely hit subscribe for this second channel if you haven't already. And otherwise, I guess, yeah, that's going to be that. So stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.